This week we're going to have a look at bonding, drawing the dot and cross structures for ionic and covalent bonding. We're going to look at writing chemical formula, particularly for the polyatomic ions. And we'll have a quick look at sigma and pi bonding via CPR to determine the shapes of molecules and electronegativity and intermolecular interactions. The last one is the most important one from this topic because this is going to pick up again in organic chemistry when you're figuring out boiling points. So that one's the most important one to focus on this week. Right, so bonding and our lovely dot and cross structures. So in unit one, you're going to go to page 44. The definitions on page 44, yes, you need to know them. I'm not going to go through them now. I'm going to dive straight into ionic bonding. Okay. Now, an ionic bond is formed when something has completely transferred electrons to another substance. So we've got complete transfer of electrons. from one atom to another. So something donates, one atom donates an electron and a different atom accepts an electron. For the one that accepts, oh, let's start with the donate. For the one that donates an electron, now, an electron is negatively charged, so it's donating a negative charge. So it's becoming less negative, so it's more positive. Whatever donates an electron becomes the positive ion. And an ion is a charged atom, so an ion forms when something either donates or accepts an electron. The thing that accepts electrons it is taking in a negative charge. It's becoming more negative. So it's forming the negative ion. Now, in ionic bonding, usually, usually, not always, but the vast majority of the time, it forms between a metal and a non-metal. And when we look at the periodic table, the metals are the ones that sit on the left-hand side and the non-metals are on the right-hand side of the periodic table. And the metals are the ones that are going to donate electrons. So the metals will form the positive ion. The ones that accept electrons, they are the non-metals. So they're going to form the negative ion. The size of the charge on the ion is determined by the number of electrons that it accepts or donates. So if I have sodium, sodium has one electron in its outer energy level. When it donates an electron, it forms Na plus and the electron. Now it's Na plus one because it has donated one electron. Magnesium has two electrons in its outer energy level. And when it donates two, it becomes magnesium plus two. It's plus because it's donated and two because it's left, it's lost two electrons. For the non-metals and accepting electrons, an example would be chlorine. Chlorine has seven electrons in its outer energy level. It will take in one in order to get a stable octet and form Cl minus one or just minus. So that minus one tells me it has accepted one electron. For oxygen, it will take in two electrons because oxygen is in group six. It has six electrons in its outer energy level. So it needs two more electrons for a stable octet. That forms O minus two. Minus tells me it's accepted electrons. Two tells me it's taken in two electrons. Now, when something forms an ionic bond, and donates and accepts electrons. We 
have to be able to describe what that looks like in 3D space. So when something is forming ionic bonds, it's not just forming one single ionic bond and that's it and that's all you have. You have a big crystal with millions of ions in it. So if you look at a sodium chloride crystal under a microscope, that's made up of millions and millions of Na plus and Cl minus ions held together. In the crystal. So what it actually looks like is you have a sodium ion and beside the sodium ion you have a Cl minus ion. So if that sodium donated an electron to the chlorine, it's now positively charged and the chlorine is negatively charged. Now in the crystal, that sodium ion is surrounded by six chlorine ions. Now I'm only drawing in four because I can't draw in the other two. Now, remember, opposites attract, and that's what's holding all of the ions in the crystal, this attraction between opposite ions. Now, there's four in the same plane as sodium. There's also one in front and one in the back. So what's key is each sodium ion is surrounded by six. Six Cl minus ions. And if I was to continue this, my next sodium ion would be here, here, there, and then I'd have a chlorine here, I'd have a sodium here, etc. And it repeats over and over and over again. Okay, now showing how an ionic bond forms. Now this is vital that you can do this the way the examiner wants it. There's a couple of ways to show it, but I'm only going to show you one. I don't like drawing out the ring structures for this because it wastes time. When we're talking about bonding, you only need to show the outer energy level electrons. We don't care about the inner ones because they're not involved in bonding. So ionic bonding dot and cross structures. What I'm about to say is going to sound really basic and you're going to be like, but of course, that's how we always draw it. And I will definitely remember to do this. To be honest, if that was the case, everyone would get 100% here. And it's one of the questions, this is one of the trick questions in the exam paper. Because the last about three, four years, the exam mark scheme has actually cracked down on this. If it specifies dot and cross diagrams, you must have dots on one atom and crosses on the other. If you put dots on both, you get no marks, no matter how beautiful and how well illustrated it is. Okay, so just be careful with these. So on page 48, let's work our way through a couple of these. So we're asked to show dot and cross structures showing ionic bond formation in sodium fluoride. Now, if it's an ionic bond, electrons have to completely transfer from one atom to another. Now, first step is to look up sodium in the periodic table. It's in group one, so I'm going to draw in a dot for the electron for sodium. Now, you don't need to draw the rings, I only care about the one that's in the outer energy level. For fluorine, you look it up and it is in group seven, so it has seven electrons in its outer energy level. Now, according to the octet rule, they're going to react to get eight electrons in their outer energy level. Now, you have to think about what's happening here. Sodium is a metal. It's going to donate an electron. Fluorine is a non-metal. It's going to accept an electron. So that electron from sodium completely transfers over to the fluorine. And we show this with an arrow. If you draw a straight line and it's not an arrow, you don't get any marks because you're showing the wrong type of bonding. So it has to be an arrow. Now what that's going to form is Na, and it's an ion, and we draw that in square brackets. Now don't forget the charge. Sodium has lost an electron, so it becomes positively charged. 
And if you want to put the one in, you can. It's just plus one. Fluorine has accepted an electron. So it becomes negatively charged. Now the charges are vital. If they're not there, you're going to drop three marks. Now, when it says dot and cross structures, I was very careful to put dots on sodium and crosses on fluorine. The reason why they're specifying that and being more specific about it now is to show when you have the fluorine ion, that you're showing that that electron didn't originate on fluorine. It actually came from the sodium. And by drawing it this way, you're actually showing that. Now, if I wanted the chemical formula for sodium fluoride, it would be how many of each did I need? So my chemical formula would just be NaF, one of each. For magnesium fluoride, So look at magnesium in the periodic table. It's in group two. So it has two electrons in its outer energy level. Chlorine is in group seven. So it has seven electrons in its outer energy level. Chlorine needs one more electron to have a stable octet. Magnesium needs to donate two to have a stable octet. Because on the next energy level in, closer to the nucleus, we have a full, stable, complete energy level. So magnesium needs to donate two. So one of those electrons transfers over to the chlorine. Now, once chlorine has accepted that electron, it now has a stable octet and it can't take any more. But magnesium still needs to get rid of another electron to have a stable octet. So we need a second chlorine atom. And that second electron transfers to the chlorine. Now look how I've drawn this with my arrows. And that's going to form. Magnesium, the ion is going to have a plus two charge because it has lost two electrons. Chlorine that chloride ion has a minus charge. Now there's two of them. So you can either put a two in front like that or draw it out a second time. Don't do both. And you must show that you have two chloride ions over here. And if I was writing the chemical formula for this, it would be Mg, because I only need one of them, Cl2, because I need two chlorines for every one magnesium. And that's the dot and cross structures for ionic bonding.